oddly inappropriate tonight, Jess, right? It's oddly inappropriate, yes. Yeah, because um, my life is Brennan's life, and he's not here tonight. We've decided to uh, go AWOL and do our own thing without him. And really AWOL, we're not even going to do a film, and it's Whoa. not in his life. Yeah. So basically, I, it's we, just we women. We texted Brennan and was like, is this illegal? Are we allowed to do this? <laughs> Are we breaking contract? Yeah, I think we... I th- think we're fired so this could be this could be the last one you hear from us um but we are going out on a solid note because we are uh going to discuss everything that is idris elba or at least the uh apple tv show hijack which was a i think it was a seven part tv show um that has been out for the last couple months and Jess just recently saw it and was raving about it. I saw it when it first came out and I saw it on the weekly installment. So I'm guessing that you must have done a little Oh, wow. You saw it on the weekly? I don't think there's any show that I watch on the weekly installments. Everything, I just wait till it's out on um, on streaming and then I just binge. I can't wait. Like, we watch a lot of things like this and I think it's because we're old and that's how we're used to watching television, but... I do enjoy things sometimes a little bit more if I can sit and watch four, five, six, twelve, ep- you know, episodes at a time. So yeah, um, the, or, no, there's no way I could rem- even remember to watch it on TV <laughs> or remember what happened last week. I need to just be in a gaze and binge it, and then yeah, and then be done with it. <laughs> well, we'll have to talk about how the what the difference is, especially with this uh, this feature uh, between doing it both ways. Um, the good part is you can skip over the whole. You could do the skip recap, yes, because I just watched the episode. Whereas <laughs> that is true. we would we would be like, yeah, we have to watch the recap because I'm not really sure. And and with this this particular one, and there's one other show that we watch, we tend to watch the beginning of the same episode we already saw, and we'll get like five minutes into it, and then we're like. Yeah, dude, we saw this one. We this is we got to go to the next one. We already saw this one, but it took us a while to kind of like catch up to it. So, um, <laughs> yeah. So this stars um, Idris Elba and other people, and I honestly and, don't. It's true, and know other people because I don't think them. I know anyone else. Yeah. Do you right. kind of feel like maybe you've seen somebody somewhere before? No? I don't think not one person looks familiar. <laughs> I'm like, maybe the pilot, maybe like the girlfriend yeah. flight attendant. No, I don't think so. I feel like I saw like the the main hijacker in something else, but then I watch a lot of British television. So he also um, have, has a very universal face. Like it's just a, does he? a short guy with a, with a beard. Yeah. He, and he, he's got he had <laughs> like a sort of short haircut. Yeah, I guess yeah. so. He looked like a lot of guys at a British pub, right? Or Yeah, exactly. Or he could just be the guy that you saw at the grocery store last week. He just has the face that you think you just <laughs> see anywhere. He's picking up a six pack at the packy. Yeah, that looks like him too. Uh, so <laughs> I, you know, I know Brennan gets all into this piece of it. I could read a bunch of stuff, but if you're going to want to watch this, you can look online. There's a plenty of, um, imdb or wikipedia to to find all of that stuff that you want i have no idea who directed it uh don't know who wrote it all i know is that the man idris elba is uh starring in it and uh honestly that was the draw for me so i'm guessing probably the draw for you yeah so i was going on a flight and i was deciding what i needed to download to entertain myself Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay, go ahead. I have something to say about that, but go ahead. Oh, and now that Netflix took away my downloaded downloading abilities because they got very <laughs> stingy, I think now my first app to go to, to to download things for a flight is now Apple TV. And I just saw that it just Alba starred in the show and I was like, say no more. Download, 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 download. Right. You might have wanted to say a little more because you were getting ready to get on a plane and you were now going to watch a whole series called Hijack. So Yeah, that's true. I, I was on a plane <laughs> and I was like, what better what better show to watch than this? And it was actually pretty funny because I told my boss my ordeal of being on a plane that uh there was some dent in the metal and I was sitting on the runway for two hours and he was like 
weren't you nervous that there was a dent in the metal and like something could happen? And I was like, not at all. They could have told me like, a monkey is flying this plane and I would have no fear whatsoever. Like, I'm like, well, the monkey's probably better than me. So let's, let's go with it. <laughs> it might have some training. You never know. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, there was, there's always the possibility that there's somebody like this on your flight that's an expert negotiator. So we are going to spoil this. Um, although I think it's really spoiled by the title, Hijack. Um, it is about a hijacking, but there are a lot of twists and turns, things that I didn't quite see coming and other things that, you know, they threw a lot of red herrings out that I followed them. And I was like, wait, but what happened? What about this guy? I don't understand why that's not part of this anymore. Um, but um, so basically it's uh, Idris Elba is our main character and he is getting on a plane while well, he's he, he's got an ex-wife and it seems like he still really, really cares about her. And I I really like that about him a lot. Mm -hmm. Um and and a son and he's he wants to get back together with them but it doesn't seem like it's going to happen so he winds up getting on the plane this plane um still wearing his wedding ring all of this kind of stuff and Wait, speaking of, of ex-wife so i remember like in the beginning his ex-wife was like you better not get on this plane and then Ajaba was like watch me i'm gonna get on this plane i don't right. think i understood why what was why that, she what that part was all about yeah right so the flight was from uh dubai, oh, dubai. i believe yeah oh, and so that, he was heading was back just... to london i think to try to woo her you know back into good graces but she has already moved on oh uh, i didn't realize he did it for the relationship i i okay that makes sense yeah i believe so i mean that's that's what would that's what made sense to me and okay. uh, but she's moved on to somebody else um I, I mean he's a catch i don't know what he did to her but i mean i'm i'm a forgiving person when it comes to yeah Idris Elba, Idris Elba, so. i'll give him chance 10 11 12 13 14 uh. <laughs> <laughs> and wearing the wedding ring i'm like okay yeah you got me i like that look on you so um <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so, and he's got a son, a teenage, a teenage son. Um, these all become sort of pseudo plot points. Uh, we meet a lot of characters in this movie simply because he's on a very large plane with a lot of people. Um, and I'm just curious. So the, the, they wind up have, they wind up being hijacked. This plane winds up being hijacked by, um, you're not really sure what they're motivated by because it just seems like they're wait they keep waiting for something to happen like they they're they're waiting for somebody to make a decision and it doesn't there is a guy who's in charge but he doesn't really seem to be in charge um which is part of sort of the the, the road they lead you down so that you get someplace else than where you started so um, i think four of the six hijackers or three of the five hijackers are amateurs like there's a girl and a kid and also <laughs> yes <laughs> and the girl's a bit uh, more of a badass the, the kid is like i feel like he's like you know kind of staring at the ceiling a lot like i'm not really sure what i'm supposed to be doing here just don't tell my um, mom <laughs> yeah exactly don't tell my mom um <laughs> and we meet we meet a guy in the beginning who gets on the plane they they let him on late and he gets through security and it's a weird security situation and uh, we find out that all of these little things that seem like little things are actually big things and they're all bar part of a bigger plot uh, that is being run by these I Irish nationalists, nationalists that are in prison and they that, that's the whole point is that they they want these people released from prison and the reason that the hijackers are hijacking the plane is because they have something on each of them. So they're essentially also being... You know, they're victims, too. They're being hijacked by these people that want to get these real criminals um, out, of, out of prison. And we wind up dealing with governments. And um, every time they show the government, I'm like, oh, are you guys ever going to get anything right? Because the only people who oh are getting gosh. things right. Right? The air traffic controllers seem to do okay. There's one I really like. She seems to, like, take the oh, whole thing. Oh, she's a badass. But yeah. like, who is it? The woman? Pri is she the prime minister or there, like yeah, secretary of defense? Are yeah. they like really trying to make her look bad because she's a woman or something? Because they make her look like she can't make any decisions or stick to her own or anything. It's it's actually pretty like hard to watch. 
I think it just shows how bad government is at governing. It's like you have two sort of different parts of government that have to come together to be able to make a decision about whether or not they should scramble jets and basically take this plane down and kill a bunch of a bunch of people but a bunch of british nationals which is what they're worried about uh because it's a british you know uh air force that are that's going to be doing it so i think it just shows that you know there's the people that are like yes go in now kill them all it's just we have to do this and then <laughs> hold on just one second these are our people these are actually people people uh how do we want to handle this so um that part of that part of this whole thing irritates me because that irritates me in real life is what irritates me in movies too and i'm like okay that's fine but can we just focus on what idris elba is doing on the plane um, <laughs> and how he as as a negotiator, he's very interesting. Don't you think the, like the take he, like how he, his relationship, how he develops this sort of relationship with the hijackers? Yeah. Like he has to invoke trust in them and, but right. just enough where he can just switch it at the end and, and get his way. Yeah. Like he has and, to kind of pretend like, oh, I'm in your side. Oh, here's a tip. You should do this. Or here's a tip. You should do this. So they're like, okay, we can't kill him off because he's actually pretty smart and he's helping us. But he's still on the civilian side. Right. And I think there's a there's sort of an agreement. I don't know if it's spoken or unspoken that by him taking on this like role of the of the citizens on the plane that he's keeping, you know, he's quelling any type of situation that's actually going to, you know, put the hijackers in harm's way. Um, I'm always like keen to know about like hijacking this is never going to end well like the best ending is that you land the plane and you get arrested there's no other ending to this i agree so when you're watching the show and you're and you see that the hijackers are are walking around with guns and stuff you're you're kind of like what's the purpose how is this going to end but then you realize it there's money involved. And now I'm like, okay, so that makes sense. That's why they did this. But still, right. like like you said, when the hijackers land and everyone gets off the plane, like, do they think that they're also just going to get off the plane and no one's right. going to just talk about it? Yeah, I mean, have you ever, first of all, hijackings don't really happen that much anymore. They happened a little bit more probably closer to the advent of commercial airline flight <laughs> as opposed to now but there's just too many you know ways this is not going to work for it to happen in real life and so when you're watching it it feels it almost feels like a little ridiculous so you really have to buy into what's happening and for me i was buying into it just because of the um, amount of drama that they ensued. I, and I think the reason that it was dramatic for me, it was that this was taking place in seven parts because it was a seven hour flight from Dubai to London, which also seems kind of short, honestly, now that I think about it. Um, oh, I didn't even think about it that way. But I do, I thought it was a bit more believable because they killed off that girl who was a security right. checkpoint girl. And so I guess because the time in which she got the phone call and she left was when all the guns got on the airplane, like that the guns went through the luggage. Right. But there so. was a guy who brought the guns on the plane. So the security girl that lets, essentially lets, lets the guy come on with guns. But the guy who brings those on the plane does not end up being one of the terrorists. So like, that's the frazzled guy at the end right who who you like kind of watch through the beginning but then you yes you watch because... him through the whole thing going when is this guy gonna like become one of the hijackers like he's yeah. still just a guy on the plane right mm -hmm. unless i'm missing something does he ever does it ever actually do they ever actually know that he's the one who brought the weapons on the plane at the end i think it was revealed but yeah i, I don't think so <laughs> it just it's one of those things that you're fought you know your brain's following while they're actually weaving a different part of the story and they're you know leaving you a bad a, a red yeah. herring so to speak and yeah this was the part the part that i didn't get was at the very beginning 
that jump started the hijacking, one of like the teenage girls finds a bullet in the bathroom. So right. like how did that bullet get in the bathroom? Were they like loading their their bullets in the bathroom and one just fell? Right. And if I, I saw a bullet in the bathroom, honestly, I probably it, don't know nothing about guns. I wouldn't jump to think it's a bullet. I'm like, oh, it's a piece to a toy or it's like a piece <laughs> to, I don't know, something. I don't think I'd immediately jump and be like, oh, it's a bullet. I don't know. Maybe these girls live in a harsh part of London and, you know, they know. They know the bullets. So. Well, also, you find out, we find out at some point that the guns are also just all loaded with blanks. Um, yeah. So, so no one's actually, no, and the, and the hijackers don't, all of the hijack, the hijackers do not know it except for the lead hijacker, right? Yeah. The lead hijacker has a real gun, but he right. gave everyone else fakes. Yeah. Right. God, we're talking an awful lot about the series and have really not talked enough about Idris Elba, I don't <laughs> think, actually. It's true. It's true. Yeah. So his, I mean, he's, his, by trade, he's a negotiator. That's really all I know about him. I do know that he's sitting to next to probably one of the most irritating people on the plane, which that always happens, right? Um, of, of course. It, yeah. It's a guy who um, is... Well, what do you do? What are you going to do? Sit down. What are you going to do? Talking oh, so much. Oh, gosh. That finance, like, British bro. Yeah. Just the oh, worst. Oh, God. He was such an imbecile. <laughs> and at some, we have to mention, too, that at some point early on in the first couple hours, there are a couple of dudes, and I don't know why I remember them as being Americans, but maybe they weren't, who decided that they were going to, we're going to take the plane. We're not going to let this happen. And they immediately just get <laughs> strapped up in the back of the plane like, nope. You guys yeah, I mean, suck at they this. Had, they had no plan. They just had rage. And Idris was like, you, got, you guys are just stupid. They had yeah. nothing going for them. I also feel like there were not enough hijackers on the plane, like, for it to be effect, effective. You know, there were so only wait, let's see, there were six, four or five. There was the Maybe girl. Six. And then there was, I think the there kid. was a Muslim guy. There was a kid. And then there was a kid's brother. So I guess there were four, right? There wasn't any more? There might have been five, a stretch, but I just don't feel like that's enough for, I mean, on a flight that long, there's probably more flight attendants. Um, and the flight attendants were interesting on this flight too. I mean, and th the fact they were, there was all kinds of stuff going on on this plane, passing notes, passing bullets, passing guns, um, all went under, you know, the radar of all the hijackers. So they're doing a pretty bad job at this. Um, I would say so. Yeah. Yeah. And um, there's a whole, there's subtext. There's subtext of the, one of the flight attendants, I believe it was having an affair. It was, a yeah, the flight attendant having an affair with the pilot and things I just the really didn't just care about rolling her eyes and be like are you serious <laughs> yeah but she got the crap beat out of her in a bad way like she, she looked rough the whole time I, I was like i wouldn't want that role makeup every day looks terrible for her <laughs> she did yeah so you just that's when you know you've got to just be the pilot um the fact that they there were so many people who didn't believe that the plane was being hijacked is kind of a weird um thing i mean the, the hijackers took everyone's phones and everything but somehow every so often somebody would have a phone or would have something i mean and... i think i think that would actually be valid like if you were on a plane and someone said give me your phone i i do think the people that had two phones like a business phone and a personal phone yeah would be smart and not hand it over or the people that had an ipad wouldn't hand over their ipad but they'd hand over a phone i certainly would keep my ipad just hand over, and only hand over the phone yeah, you have to think that probably half half of any plane that you're on, people have at least Laptops. two devices of some sort. Yeah, everyone has at least a computer or an iPad and a phone. I would say, like you said, probably half have both of those. And they yeah. are only collecting phones. And laptops and iPads can still connect the internet just as well as a phone can. Yeah, and the fact that there were there was a little family on the plane, one, the dad happens to be a doctor, and that plays a role in one of the... Um, one of the hijackers um, 
gets shot? No, gets sh- shivved, I guess, right? Yeah, I think from, like, um, the guy had scissors, like, like, t- right. like medication scissors or something. Right, because um, some... Hands. Right, because there was a diabetic. He needed to get his stuff. There was, yeah, scissors. Um, anyway, that they have that. There's that family, and just amongst those four, there should be at least you know six devices. Um, yeah. And the fact that none of those kids, you know, lost their shit on the plane, I'm pretty, I'm, I'm pretty impressed by. I, I didn't want that to happen because I don't want to hear that, um, in real life or in a series. A seven part series. Yeah, um, you do have some of the audience like rolling their eyes at the hijackers, be like, Yeah, I know, I'll shut up or whatever. I'll look forward. Right. And, then you have, and then you have some that are just terrified to even blink. Right. So there's, um, we start to find things start to unravel and we start to find out that this whole plot that's really happening has to do with these guys that are in prison and, um, the whole point is for the government to let them out so that they can go and get money from another guy. <laughs> it's they all just very strange. Their general crime, <laughs> right? The crime spree continues even from behind bars. Um, and then there, and I think this must be around either episode six or episode seven. So we're nearing the end, and this woman who we just sort of see in the periphery sometimes um, ends up being a crazy badass part of the situation and like junk jumps out of her seat, kills the pilot of the airplane and then goes and takes over the aircraft. Did you see that coming at all? No, and this is the only part of the series that pissed me off that I wish was changed because okay. she only did this because they threatened to kill her son or her daughter and her husband. But I'm just right. like, I think if someone threatened to kill like two of my closest family members, like just getting like, I don't know, just flying a plane that I don't know how to fly <laughs> Right. I, I don't I don't think I could do that. Well, and like also, I just wouldn't have like like because chances are you're, you're gonna crash it in the city somewhere. So you're you're just gonna be known to be a terrorist. Your your face is gonna be on it. I guess no one really knows who was flying the plane. I don't know. Well, that and if you know, I mean, she has to know this going in and getting on the plane, right? She this is not something that she found out while she was on the plane that her her family's being held hostage so at that point don't or i don't are they being held hostage or are they just threatening to hold them hostage at that point don't you you know none of these people want to like go through the authorities which i guess i kind of understand because we saw the authorities and they can't keep their shit together but you're not like trying to hide your family or you're not trying to do anything else and i wouldn't these people are criminals i would never trust them to keep their word you know, I don't even they're... think, I think if I knew that information before I got on the plane, I just want to get on the plane. I would just keep sitting there in the waiting area and just pretend like I was waiting for another flight. I just want to get on. Right. <laughs> right. And be like, oh, maybe somebody might want to go check on, go check on my family. I don't know. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'll, I, all I know is that it kept, it kept me in suspense um and that's part of why i liked it and i think i liked the closeness of it like you're there it's one place they're in an airplane there's not you know everybody knows that claustrophobic feeling uh that's ever flown and what that's like and i think there's a lot of times where the shots are really close up in people's faces and there's you know you can feel how how uncomfortable it is and um how 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 scared people are and how suspenseful it is. And I think for me, that's what kept me coming back to watching it, you know, week after week, they would always leave you at a really good dropping point so that you were like, Oh my God, what's going to happen now? So, um, I liked watching it that way. I think I would also like binging it for the first time again, if I could, but you know, you can't. Oh gosh. Um, So I, I binged it on the flight and right. There's seven, (laughs) episodes i probably only got to like 
five and a half before my iPad died. And I oh, was no. like, oh, crap. <laughs> and now the, these new iPads, they have like the new USB-C um, charger. So yeah. I, did, I didn't have that one. Because now I have to carry on two chargers, like my phone charger and my iPad charger. So right. I brought my phone charger on the plane. I think my iPad charger was packed. And um, I'm just like, crap, I can't even finish it now. And so I had this cross-country flight out of, like, JFK. So my, my hike home, I was exhausted. I probably got home at, like, 8. I had work the next day. But I still stayed up to watch, like, the last episode and a half because I had to. It was, <laughs> did you? It was that. Just like- I did. I was exhausted. I had work the next day. It was a cross country flight, but like this was so good. I had to just finish the last episode and a half out, and I did it. I'm glad I did, but I was so tired. <laughs> well, it was. It was one. It really was one of those. It was a nail biter and a good suspenseful story. This is not something. I mean, there were so many flaws in just watching it you're like okay this is heavily flawed and i can't imagine you know these people would act they would the way that they did and i feel like a pilot would have more opportunity to tell you know ground control or atc that there's a hijack happening without actually saying there's a hijack happening there's got to be some way that they're like you know it's a you know it's a code 2743 or something like that i don't know but um (laughs) I don't fly planes. I have no idea. And anybody listening to this is who does fly planes is like, yeah, she doesn't have any idea. Um, but I think I've, you have to just throw a lot of that out the window, a lot of, you know, you have to suspend belief about a lot of things. Um, and I was perfectly willing to do that. Um, we didn't even really talk a very much about Idris's family because his son becomes the target of, of the kidnappers as well at some point, which lasts for a couple episodes, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, no, you're right. One yes. thing I wish they changed is he got like one or two opportunities to text his family. And mm. one of his texts was like, um, incident on the plane. I'll always love you. And I'm just like, if you had one opportunity to tell somebody something, why don't you say 911, hijackers on the plane, call the authorities? <laughs> like, <laughs> I know. Because Not- that's the first one. That's right. That's the first thing that he texts. That's the when- first thing he said is like, incident on the plane, like, I'll always love you, or like something like that. And I'm just right. like, if you had one thing to say to the world, <laughs> Why would you not say call nine one one hijackers on plane? <laughs> like just and then well, he, and then the wife had to like be like it out. oh like is this an emergency? Is this him playing a mind game like he always does? Right. Like what right. does this mean? Right. Well, I mean, or is it him being like? I mean, because you know, Idris Elba's like. If anybody is going to figure out how to get us out of this, it's me. I'm the hostage <laughs> negotiator, you know, or or I can see like him also being like this is, you know, her her taking it as a mind game does, you know, offer some insight into their relationship. I'm supposing that maybe I, that's, that's true part of the because problem. he would. She he she was like to her new boyfriend or something like this is why we're not together. He always pulls this shit. <laughs> right. And the boyfriend was the one who was kind of, he was like a cop, right? And then so he's the one that's yeah. like, huh, this is, hmm, this seems like something I need to investigate fuller. Even if my whole, you know, cop precinct is like, nah, it's, we're good. You know, it's, it's kind of like, yeah, I'm going to have to see what's going on. And I'm going to call in my FBI friend who's going to, none of these, first of all, none it of these terms are It wasn't even my correct, FBI friend. But. It was just like my hookup from like five years ago. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> That is true. And maybe, maybe there's a, so, okay, so I was about to say, maybe there's going to be a series too. I also think that maybe there's going to be a series too, because at the end of series one, so, you know, um, spoiler, the, the plane doesn't crash. Everyone's fine, except for the people who died (laughs) before the plane landed. Those people are not okay. Um, but there were two, <clears throat> two prisoners that were 
let go because of the negotiations and one of them gets away with yeah, money. Yeah, you're right. I, I forgot about that. One of them yeah. does get away. So he gets away and I'm thinking, well, this is not like a, this is not tied up in a bow nice and, you know, nice, nice and clean. So are we going to see, are we now going to see him as, you know, Sam negotiator for all of these things and also I'm going to be, be pursuing this guy forever um or are they just i mean the british are really good at just saying nope we're done with this series we're moving on to something else but um i can see where they left it open or there's a possibility i mean i don't think it's going to be another airplane hijacking but i don't and will interest alba be in it i mean he has to well yes yes he has to be now they were going to promote him (laughs) <laughs> now yes, that he negotiated this terrorism attack i'm yes. sure he gets promoted or something yeah he's gonna get promoted i mean but he won't be famous enough where people will recognize him as the negotiator until he's already in a fix it's gonna be like the Le- he's gonna be the new liam neeson situation <laughs> where it's gonna be you know hijack on a plane on a train and on a carousel in the ice hey. And I no. love every single one of them. I eat them all up. So I know you keep do. Them coming. <laughs> I know you do. And I think that this is a this is actually plays right into Jess. It's got that plus the Idris Elba piece, which yeah. What more, I wish what we were getting paid. For? What's that? <laughs> so yeah, what more can you ask for? You can't ask for anything except for I was thinking. I was just saying. I, I wish we were getting paid for every time we said Idris Elba tonight. Cause that would be. Either a really Pain. good drinking game or... Yeah, I'd say, or take a shot. <laughs> yeah, or some good cash, one or the other. Um, what else is there? I mean, were there any other plain characters that you were, like, you know, at all? I, I do feel bad about the girl that died um, in the beginning. Yeah, I innocently. almost forgot about her. I forgot, honestly, how she got shot. Who shot her? Yeah, the weird part about that is she was shot, but I thought we were always dealing with bullets that were blanks, and then, and yeah, I yet. Guess, I guess the main guy shot her, because I remember she yeah, was looking that's for true. the kid, and I guess he shot, honestly, that part kind of, I can't remember that part too well. Um, yeah, that did I happen kind of early. Any, I kind of wish um, Idris Alba texted his son, rather than texted his wife, because I feel like he would have taken it, not that he had any contacts, like his wife had the boyfriend, but I don't know. I kind of wish he maybe Idris Alba made a group chat between the son and the mom <laughs> and and not just the mom. Because I felt I, I felt like he needed more of a role just, other than just being a, a victim. I don't know. Right. Well, he was a pretty smart victim. I mean, he was, he kind of, he was in... Uh, Idris Elba's house and staying away pretty much from these two cleaning guys that go around just taking care of all of the the detritus all the people who help them out at some point and now they're gonna have to you know kill them um so he did a good job staying away from them and then he also did a pretty good job calling the authorities and being able to like you know, get them there and and have them realize that he was in trouble because oh you know, yeah, course, yeah. when know. when um the bo- I don't think actually I pieced this together or understood the significance like when the boyfriend called and was like hey just checking in is everything okay he had to respond in a way that was calm but wasn't gonna give away that everything's not okay so, and I think he was just like everything's fine. I'll just ride my bike back like I rode my bike here. And I right. think that was enough for him to signal something was wrong. Why was that exactly? Is it just because he just said it oddly that he knew that something was weird? Or did he not ride his bike there? Yeah, I don't remember that part. But it's always it's always when somebody's giving too much information that, you know, I mean, kidnappers or, or, or killers or whatever are, clearly not the brightest people because i would be like no no we're not going to talk about a bike what what no 
you know, I don't know who you're talking to, but it's yes and no, and <laughs> stop this. But yeah, but you know, um, everything's fine. I'm just gonna ride my bike home, just as the same bike that just, I rode here, or something like that. You remember the bike you bought me for my birthday down at the bike <laughs> store? Yeah. yeah. It's always that. And then people are never like, hey, I feel like you're sending some sort of message to somebody about something. Yeah. Um, a good coincidence, too, that his mom, you know, is dating a cop that probably, you know, helped save oh, him. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Um, At first, the cop was like, should I just let him die and make my life easier? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so yeah, that this? cuts... Yeah, that cuts a whole string between me and this kid's dad, and we can... I kind of felt like now Sam, Idris Elba's character, and this cop were just going to go have beers afterwards and just be like, I don't know, do you think we need this woman and this chick, or this this kid? I don't know. It seems like we're kind of we're kind of vibing, and we, we might not need that, so... Um, yeah, I don't know. I I mean, we clearly liked it enough to uh, go off script here at Films with the Women um, and say, A, we're going to go off script by doing a TV show, and B, we're going to do it without any guys involved. So I like that, except, except for Mr. Elba, of course. Um, <laughs> uh, so, so yeah, I'm sure that I'm not going to speak for you, but I, I give this a recommend. Suspend belief about what you think is going to happen in a kidnapping. But yeah, other than that, what about you? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I've watched a few Apple TV series, and Apple TV, I think, first started off pretty weak. I think they mm. had a few shows that I was like, ugh. The morning show definitely was the hooker. Um, yeah. And I watched a few others that weren't that great either, but this is a really good one, and I'm surprised it's not as popular. Like, I didn't hear anybody talk about it. The only reason that I knew about it was just because I saw Idris Elba was in it but no one said oh I've seen this show it's so good like it's not widely talked about yeah it's kind of funny with that you talk about Apple shows like this because I do we watch the morning show as well and uh there's a newer season we just started watching um you you won't watch it until it's time to you know binge it I know but um having watched this this just sort of kept my attention a lot more week to week uh, and it would as a binge as well just because of, of I don't know maybe the suspense as I'm watching this season of the morning show I know a totally different thing but as I'm watching it I'm like I feel like about half of every episode is entirely unnecessary and it's just a bunch of padding and I don't the morning I, show is a lot of dialogue <laughs> It is a lot. It is a lot. Of, yeah, le- a lot less action, a lot more dialogue. Um, agree. So that I guess maybe I just don't like people talking. I I mean that's probably true in general. Um, yeah. So I think I think things are things are getting better. I do have to say that it's starting to grate on my nerves how much we're now having to pay for all the streaming services that we're engaging. Oh, in, I know. So. I think they did two price jumps like i think it started at 4.99 yeah like 5.99 now it's 6.99 yeah and i think we paid like when we first got it we paid for like two years up front for 12 cents or something like that and it was amazing (laughs) and now and i realize that's not a sustainable model i get it i I don't have an mba but i understand how math i think i had a i got it free because because at worst, at first for three months, because I got like a new iPhone, and I think right. they extended it for free at least like three or four times. So I think I got at least a year for free just for <laughs> buying new Apple stuff. And, then they and now they're the like, "We got gotcha. you. You're mine." Yeah, you're basically, yeah. now they're having like quality stuff on there, and and yeah. Well, just keep having some, you know, some better quality stuff. Keep uh, asking our faves like Idris to come and you know do these things and. I'm happy to pay, so cause yeah, I like my entertainment. So it's a recommend for you. It's a recommend for oh, me. Absolutely, yeah. 
There um, are very few things that I would watch after a cross country flight before I work the next day. <laughs> this this cross the list, <laughs> especially involving a hijacking. I do want to know. Yeah. I mean, just on on the end note, I do want to know like what the people around you could possibly have been thinking when they're like, "Wait a minute, is she watching a show on a plane about a hijacking on a plane?" <laughs> I am uncomfortable now. So yeah, yeah. Oh well, well that's great. That is two big thumbs up for this. Um, and I have no idea what we have coming up. I think it's some horror stuff with you and the regular crew, and then I'm going to be picking up some a Spanish speaking one with the rest of the crew. So that should be fun. Um, but until then, there are all the channels you can usually find us. I don't know what those are. So Brennan will have to come back and yeah. Yeah. Ask (laughs) Brennan. He is uh Brennan underscore pod host on Instagram. That much I know. So, um, (laughs) but thanks Jess. This was a lot of fun. We should do this more often. Yeah, this was fun. All right. Until next time, you guys, I don't know what he says, but stay happy. See ya. Bye. Thanks for listening to films with the women in my life. If you enjoyed being a listener in our life, please rate and subscribe on Apple Podcasts or on your favorite podcast app. Keep up with the latest from the show on Instagram at Brennan underscore pod host, on Facebook at Films with the Women in My Life, and on Twitter at Films Women Pod. Finally, you can email the show with questions and suggestions at Films with the Women at gmail.com. Original music for the show was created by Ian Burke and Chris Iwanek. Original artwork created by Nicole Telesio. This show is produced by Brennan Snyder. Thank you again for listening and enjoy your movies.